it binds to a nicotine receptor inside the white adipose tissue, inside our white fat, and it initiates lipolysis. So with this, it seems like this would be a really cool thing to utilize for additional fat loss, particularly when you're fasting. But there's downsides to it, there's caveats, and we have to take a really objective look at combining nicotine with fasting so that we truly understand what's going on here. Nicotine is not the same as a cigarette, okay? And I'm not here to defend nicotine. I really truly believe that I have a pretty like, neutral stance on nicotine. But one thing that's important to know is to know that it's not the same as a cigarette. It is not even remotely the same. It is one compound in a myriad of gnarly compounds in cigarettes, okay? Nicotine binds to these nicotinic receptors within our body and can have a, a numerous different effects within the body. You know, for the most part, it's influencing what's called acetylcholine, which is the primary energy neurotransmitter within our body. So this could be very beneficial when we're fasting, but I'm not talking about energy with fasting. I wanna talk more about the direct effect on fat loss, because if you're watching this, you're probably into fasting and you are probably trying to find different ways to accelerate it. Like methylene blue works great with fasting. Uh, caffeine works great with fasting. Different polyphenols. Anyhow, we'll get into all of it. You've gotta check this stuff out. It's from one of my favorite companies, RX Sugar. This is called their Fiber Pro, and this is an allulose fiber blend. So we're talking something that can really trigger a heavy GLP-1 response. This is working on multiple different axes to ultimately reduce appetite. So allulose is probably the most well-documented supporter of GLP-1 activity in the body from a natural perspective. So allulose is not an artificial sweetener. It's coming, it's a rare sugar that's in like figs and dates, and they concentrate it into a form like this where you're getting a legit GLP-1 effect that's making you satiated. So before a fast, it's a great thing to try because it just curbs your appetite. But what I'll do is I'll use it prior to going out to dinner or something like that, and I kid you not, within like 15, 20 minutes, my appetite's probably about 30 to 40% less. So it's a real thing, it's not pseudoscience, there's legit evidence behind allulose and how it affects GLP-1, and then very legit evidence behind fiber and how that affects GLP-1, not to mention they put some probiotic strains in it that are very effective at helping that GLP-1 response as well. So RX Sugar is paving the way with a lot of really cool metabolic research and some of the top names in the industry are behind them, guys like Dr. Dom Diagostino. So I put that link down below and that is for 40% off, legit 40% off they're RX Sugar Fiber Pro. So check them out in that top line of the description underneath this video. This is gonna like blow the doors off of some of these other fiber products because this is not just fiber, it's truly for satiety as well. So that link down below for 40% off. Remember that the primary reason, independent of calories of course, that fasting burns fat is catecholamines. Now these are things like adrenaline, epinephrine, right? This stimulates fat loss to occur, okay? Now, there's a couple key neurotransmitters there, right? We're talking about like things like acetylcholine that you can increase from nicotine. We're talking about adrenaline, which is more of a catecholamine slash neurotransmitter. But these work synergistically in the sense that acetylcholine kind of gives you energy and adrenaline is sort of like this external sort of fight or flight energy. The interesting thing is that adrenaline allows you to start burning more of your stored fat. That's one of the reasons why fasting is particularly unique and why we see even in the literature that independent of calories, fasting seems to burn additional fat over caloric restriction in many cases. It might not be much, but it is enough to be somewhat meaningful. It might not always be statistically significant, but it's still enough to be somewhat meaningful. Anyhow, how does nicotine play into this? So we look at a study that was published in rodents to understand the mechanisms first. So hear me out on this. This study was published in Neuropsychopharmacology, okay, and they gave rodents either 3, 30, or 300 micrograms of nicotine per kilogram of body weight, okay? And what they found is that across the board, especially in a dose-dependent fashion though, that nicotine reduced their appetite. They ate less, okay? What was particularly interesting is that they ate less, they lost weight, or it prevented weight gain if they did eat more, but they didn't lose lean body mass. Okay, well that's particularly interesting. Okay, and the reason that it's particularly interesting is because like, you're eating less, why didn't you lose lean body mass? And the only speculation here is that because nicotine provides so much energy, 
that perhaps they were a little bit more active, right? So when you're active and you're using your muscles, you're less likely to burn it. Like, for example, compare that to a GLP-1 receptor agonist like Ozempic. Someone will take that, they will eat less, so their entire metabolic rate will drop, and they will lose lean body mass unless they're making a concerted effort to lift or resistance train, right? So if you have something like nicotine on board, then it might be a different route because you have more energy. One of the important caveats that we do need to note is that there is a pretty well-known body of evidence, particularly one study published in Circulation, that shows that chronic higher use of nicotine can result in hyperinsulinemia and possibly even metabolic dysfunction. In fact, they said in this study that nicotine was the major constituent in cigarette smoke that leads to metabolic issues. So with this, we have to be a little bit careful. I'm not suggesting that nicotine's going to make everybody hyperinsulinemic, but if you're taking it during a fast, perhaps it's increasing insulin levels and sort of affecting insulin receptors to a certain degree that you're not getting all the metabolic benefit from your fast. What you might find is that it's easier to not eat, but at what potential cost? Now, I'm not posing that as a question to say nicotine's bad. It's an actual question here. Now, let's talk about how nicotine affects fat loss to see how it coincides with fasting. One theory is that nicotine converts into something called cotinine. Cotinine seems to have potential lipolytic properties where it helps fat loss, but the research is not real strong because it's been hard to repeat it. In research, we need to be able to have something be repeatable to really say that it's irrefutable. Now, with the case of nicotine, what we have seen is that in our white adipose tissue, in the fat that's just on our subcutaneous tissue, our, our, our subcutaneous fat, we have these receptors called alpha-7 nicotine acetylcholine receptors. Okay, this is a traditional nicotine uh, receptor, except it's just in the fat tissue. And what they found is that the nicotine binds to this and it triggers lipolysis to a certain degree. It changes what's called the respiratory exchange ratio. So the ratio of fat to carbs that we are burning changes. It's exactly what we want when we're fasting. We want to be oxidizing fat. So on the surface, it looks very synergistic. The downside is that nicotine only lasts about an hour before it starts to go through its half-life cycle. Now, what that means is that you'd have to continually redose, right? That's a lot of nicotine, but wrong. Where the research is getting fascinating is we're finding that nicotine, you can use in very low amounts and it will bind to the actual receptor at a very low quantity, a very low dose, and still have the same lipolysis effect. So what that means is even if you were to take a low dose of nicotine, even when it is phasing out of your system, it's still enough over the subsequent hours to trigger lipolysis. And that's what they noticed in the rodents is they noticed they would have fat loss and hunger, uh, fat loss occur and hunger go down while their nicotine was spiked, but then it still continued for hours after the nicotine was not really having any more effect on their energy systems. So that tells us that there's a prolonged fat burning effect. So if you were to use nicotine when you're fasting, what you may want to consider doing is taking a moderately low dose. We're talking half a milligram or maybe one milligram. Now I'll be fully transparent. I don't mind occasionally using a little bit of nicotine. A lot of times I'll use a little nicotine mixed with like methylene blue, like a slow dose of that. We're talking for me half a milligram at the most, maybe a quarter milligram. And I don't know if it's making me lose fat, but it's certainly curbing my appetite and suppressing some of those uh, cravings and giving me energy. But that's just me and that's a really small amount. Now, from an energy perspective, things are interesting. There was a study published in Sports Medicine Open that found that nicotine increased the overall like time to exhaustion and overall like, force output. So anaerobic activity, it gave more energy. The reason behind that is there's speculation that it, a, it's the focus and the neurological aspect and the simple acetylcholine, but the other side is that it could have something to do with a state of being more alkaline, like it could actually affect the acid base. This could help you out when you're working out in a fasted state. So anyway, backing all of this up, if you were to use nicotine when you're fasting, it is very important that you don't continually take it throughout your fast. It is something where, here's what I would recommend. It's almost like the night before you start your fast, use something like a high fiber, high allulose type 
thing, right? Like what I mentioned earlier in this video, like that RX Sugar Fiber Pro. Like that is a great thing because it'll keep you satiated overnight. And then in the morning time, you could take like a low dose of nicotine if you're interested in it, and it might help you out throughout your fast. Alternatively, you could use something like methylene blue, which is going to help you out with energy production, maybe not so much fat burning, but it's going to help you out with kind of keeping the energy high, so then maybe you have less instance to have a craving. So who would want to use it and who would want to avoid it? If you're someone that is really concerned with hyperinsulinemia and high circulating insulin, you don't want to be taking a lot of it. And you would at least want to monitor your insulin levels, right? You don't want to be just taking it willy-nilly. You know, if you're someone that is already metabolically healthy and you're looking to just optimize and tweak a little bit, this could be something that's a decent thing to consider. But again, full disclosure, I'm not condoning the use of it. It just makes sense that I lay out how it would work so that if you are going to do it, you do it safely and you do it correctly. Another thing that's very important is it's highly addictive. We know this. So addictive, but not necessarily bad for you based upon the research. There's no evidence suggesting that nicotine is dangerous, independent of cigarettes, right? But we don't know. We do know it's addictive, but caffeine's addictive and caffeine actually seems to improve a lot of metabolic markers. But what you may wanna do is take two weeks off now and then. So go like two or three weeks on at a very low dose and then take two weeks off and reset your tolerance so you're not forming an addiction to it. As always, keep it locked to hear my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.